All right, so there's a new stimulus bill that's just been proposed in Congress as of last Friday, and this has huge ramifications for all investors everywhere. And while I don't consider myself a news channel necessarily, I think it's really important to pay attention to what's going on right now. In this pandemic, we are facing a lot of changes, and that could really impact the way that we do business as real estate investors. So free rent and free mortgage is being proposed on this bill. Sounds great, but there is a lot of bad that can come from this. So let's go ahead and talk about it. All right, so for those of you who don't know, there is a new stimulus bill that has been just proposed that is talking about free rent for tenants and free mortgages for homeowners. So this on the surface sounds incredible. Why would we not want something that is pretty much just gonna finally freeze everything? That's what we really want. While the economy can't grow and nothing can happen and people can't even work at their jobs, the best thing right now almost feels like, okay, let's just stop all things happening and let's freeze rent and freeze mortgages. So this bill is the Free Rent and Mortgage Act and this is going alongside the other stimulus bill that has been proposed about giving $2,000 to everyone. And so they're two different bills. Keep in mind this has only been proposed. This is not actually passed. It still has to go through the House, Senate, and Congress. So very likely it'll probably be edited from this version, but there are still reasons that it bothers me, even though I know it could change or even get rejected. And that's just based off of what we have experienced in the CARES Act. So the CARES Act was the bill that just passed, and that's the one where people got $1,200 stimulus checks and where people got you know loans and such for their small businesses. But as we saw with that loan, not only was it rolled out so sloppily that pretty much no one knew what to do with it, checks came out later than expected, the EIDL loan, which is the small business grant that was about $10,000 you know, that I talked about in a previous video, that was originally said, oh, it's gonna have three days where it comes out and everyone's gonna get 10 grand, regardless of who you are, first come, first serve. And then it turned into a loan where, oh no, it's actually only $1,000 and that's depending on each employee that you have. And then it came out like some three weeks later. And then not to mention the checks, which, you know, if you made $50,000 and didn't lose your job, then you got a check. But if you made $100,000 and lost your job, then you didn't get a check. Plus the students and elderly who were claimed as dependents and couldn't get a check at all. So we're already seeing that these things are being rushed out. And so while I didn't pay as much attention to that because it doesn't really affect real estate investors as much, this one definitely does. So the provisions of the act is pretty simple at first. So essentially all renters do not have to pay rent anymore. There's a freeze on rent. They cannot be sent to collections. You can't uh, charge them late fees. There's nothing uh, that can stop them really from being kicked out in the sense of money. So this in some ways would feel like a good thing. There's a lot of people who have lost their jobs. Of course, hopefully we're assuming that mortgages are going to get postponed and they in a sense are and aren't at the same time. See, homeowners get to postpone their mortgages so they don't have to pay them. Now we don't really know if that is interest only, principal, we don't really know how that actually works. But as of right now, the proposal is mortgages don't have to be paid at all. However, this does not apply to vacation rentals or secondary homes. So keep in mind, it doesn't apply to any of those and it doesn't apply to investment properties. So if you have a lot of investment properties like most real estate uh, investors do, then you're essentially still gonna be on the hook for those. Now keep in mind this whole stipulation is being proposed to last one year. That is a very long time. Uh, so it's not the six months and three months that we're used to, it's an entire year. And then that's pretty much that whole time everyone in an investment property doesn't have to pay rent, but the mortgages are still due. So this is a very, very weird structure here. Uh, they have proposed a way to be reimbursed for these, uh, the fact that you're not getting your rent. 
and the proposal is a bit of a strong-arming tactic. So after throwing you into the ocean and saying, hey, good luck and swim without a raft, you know, having everyone not pay rents, what do they do? They say, all right, they're going to give a special funding. It's essentially a, a fund that's being set up for, uh, you can say, investors. But if you apply for this funding, then you have to adhere to a whole bunch of rules. And this is where I say it is a really big strong-arming tactic. For one, if you get this reimbursement and keep in mind we have no idea how the reimbursement works we don't know what they're reimbursing for we don't know if they're reimbursing for property taxes and property management and you know everything else maintenance and such that goes on we'll get to that in a second but if you do that then first of all you immediately cannot raise rents you have a five-year rent freeze by the way all of this every single thing that i'm about to say you you have to adhere to for five years after you apply for this funding. So rent freezes uh, is full effect. You can't increase your rent for any reason. And this means that even if inflation is still kicking onward and the value of your dollar is decreasing, you're effectively lowering your rent every year because you can't raise rents. And also it goes based off of what your rents were before the virus happened. So effectively, if your rent was a special pricing or something like that, then that rate is now what you're stuck with until either the tenant moves out on their own. Like I said, they don't have to pay rent in, under the effects of this bill, and so therefore you can't kick them out for that reason. So uh, they effectively, you're just stuck with that rent free. The other stipulations is you can no longer discriminate based on background and credit. So if you do a credit check, you cannot deny them for any reason within the bounds of that credit report. And if you uh, do a background check, then you cannot deny them for any reason within the background. So these are already huge. Now there are ways to do financial verification if you need to at that time without doing a credit report, but that is already a really big one. Also, you cannot uh, discriminate based on where their income is coming from. So you can no longer deny people for having vouchers or having any programs. And also, even more so, you have to register all your properties with HUD. You have to let them know every time one of your properties goes vacant, and they do have to be notified every time you're trying to fill the properties. So all of these stipulations are in effect for the next five years. Now, on the surface level, this obviously makes a lot of sense since it seems like we're going to need a lot more affordable housing and HUD is not going to want a bunch of people denied based on losing their job over circumstances they couldn't control. But the fact that it does hold uh, investors pretty much to these terms for five years and any more that we don't know about. Remember, just like the CARES Act, it could change. It could be manipulated. We have no idea. We don't know exactly what you're really agreeing to. But so far, that is it. But let's look at the more damaging side for investors. The real flaw of this bill is the fact that it's saying you're going to get reimbursement. And we don't really know how much you're getting. But as I mentioned, you still have property management fees. We don't know if that's going to count toward this reimbursement effort. You still have uh, taxes, property taxes. Are these being frozen? What about maintenance on the property? Your tenant's using the property and we have to fix it up apparently, but then you're not getting any revenue from that. And if you happen to be an investor who lives off of this income for your own families, well, then we really don't know if they're only going to cover you up to certain amounts. Uh, it's, none of this is stipulated in the bill. And the last one was vague too. The CARES Act, totally vague. So if this one comes out vague, I won't be totally surprised. But this is something that we have to definitely be cautious of, of how this impacts us as investors. So the final nail in the coffin for investors is uh, basically the qualifications for this funding, this special funding. Uh, yes, unfortunately, not every investor is actually going to be able to get it. You see, when you apply, they're going to look at your income. They're going to look at your revenue streams. They're going to look at how long you've been in this business, how many properties you own. And then they're going to put you in multiple different tiers. And in those tiers, they're going to decide who actually is eligible for the funding and who is not. So what the sounds of it is, is that if you are a much more accomplished investor with many more properties and many more revenue streams, you are unfortunately out of luck. So you could have hundreds of properties and all of them suddenly no longer generating income and you may not even be eligible for the funding that they're putting in place to alleviate investors of having no more income. 
So that is already scary enough in itself. And we also don't know how long it will take for that income to even come in or how long it'll take for them to get through the different tiers. So maybe even if you are eligible, it could be several months before you ever even receive a dime. Another thing you should note if you do become, uh, you know, apply for this funding and this is what you're looking for is the fact that you can no longer sell homes on the open market without giving HUD the first right of refusal. So if essentially HUD and all nonprofits that they are pretty much labeling, once again, a little bit vague terminology, but essentially all nonprofits and HUD have first dibs on your properties if you should sell them and you're part of this program. So now you can't sell it for the open market. You don't know how much they're gonna pay for it. I guess you might hope that's whatever your tax assessed value is, but we really don't know at this time. But essentially they get first rights to buy your property and you must sell it to them. Only then afterward, then you sell it to somebody else. And they have 60 days to make this decision. So that means if you're trying to sell the property because you're buried under the weight of your own mortgages, that's another six, uh, two months that you're gonna have to hold out you know, not being able to pay these things because you're not receiving any income on the property. So beyond all this, there are a few other small flaws that I do see with this bill that, it, I mean, it's it's just kind of vague and confusing. I mean, the fact that, you know, it's saying all primary residences now are eligible to not have to pay their mortgages. So that means if you're in a million dollar home versus a $10,000 home, some are benefiting from this way disproportionately than others. Remember, this bill does not have to pass alongside the $2,000 a month bill. We don't know really if they're gonna pass at the same time or you know if people are actually receiving income streams at the same time. So, I mean, even renters, there's kind of a danger for them as well in the fact that if the other bill doesn't really pass and it's just this one, then yeah, they don't have to pay rent, but they still don't have money if they lost their jobs to put food on the table or uh, you know car payments or everything else that's in effect. Now, I guess they're gonna keep launching stimulus bills and throwing money at this as they seem to be doing, but you know that's just something to be wary of. Uh, so the fact that this bill doesn't include any funding, so it seems to be a totally separate thing, maybe supposedly to coincide with this. Another thing is disproportionately affected is the interest payments. So we don't know if this is really applying to interest or principal, but if it is just interest, the fact that you know if you're front loaded with interest, then you're actually benefiting from this a lot more than if someone had been paying interest you know for a while and now is finally at the principal portion of it. But you know if you're looking for that as a forced savings account, then you will miss a year of savings for that reason. But essentially, that is all the things that you know I'm seeing as flaws. I mean, you can let me know if you're seeing any other flaws in here, maybe things that I'm not noticing at the moment. Uh, the, you know, This is obviously, like I said, it hasn't passed, so not necessarily anything to completely worry about, but these things are being rushed out pretty quickly, and it seems without thought, because this one is a little bit consequential for me and for my comfort level. So anyway, let me know what you all think of this bill. This is a very interesting one, uh, to say the least. Uh, normally, I probably won't follow all stimulus news, but uh, this one seemed like it's definitely something I should pay attention to, and I think all other investors should also pay attention to. So let me know what you think. Comment below. Uh, let me know, and I will tell you more as I learn more.